Okay, time to bring in our all-star panel, Democratic strategist Chris Hahn, Mr. Bo Deedle of Bo Deedle & Associates, townhall.com political editor Guy Benson, and radio host David Webb. Webb, I'm going to start with you, my friend. You're on radio. A lot of money going to these, uh, these groups. Go ahead, sir. Not only that, let's look at this comparison. Sirius XM merged. It was a $500 million merger to put the largest satellite company together to service most of the world. Versus $3 trillion to run a public broadcasting billions, system. Billions. Three billion. well, uh, th I'm sorry, three billion. Sorry, billions and trillions today. You know, they don't matter much anymore. <laughs> but, but, but this is the thing. Why does it take that much money to run something know, like this? Are, there, 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 are, there are public broadcasting stations all over the country. There's 13 here in New York. There's public broadcasting stations broadcasting across the country. We made an investment in a public broadcasting because we thought that it would be a good thing for this country to have arts, to have things like Sesame Street. But, I'm but, not surprised. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's a nice, that's a nice, that's a new, you don't think, against children. Oh, you don't think, no, 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 you don't think that a network could pick up Sesame Street? You don't think CBS, NBC, or ABC. Let's stop it. This is 420 million of taxpayers' money to support one this. Of one you got, is you got, you got one your, hour of Congress. You got your friend one that creep that that one percent of our federal budget. You got that creep Bo, Soros giving 1.8 million dollars. Soros puts why one he creep? Why? Because he controls NPR when he, he puts 1.8 billion. 1.8 control billion controls one. Chris, work with me here. Okay. Talk show, okay? Sorry, guy, talk, please. All right, I want to talk about one group that you mentioned over at the Black Board earlier. Media Matters for America. They're behind this witch hunt against Juan Williams. Guys, seriously, how do you sleep at night? You're the biggest hacks ever. Their entire job, Eric, is to sit around monitoring what people like you and me say and then twist it for their own left-wing purposes. And now they're after Mara Liason, too. It's out of control. You know, Chris, I'm going to go back to you, but I want to pull up this poll first. There was a poll done that was released early this afternoon. Check it out. Uh, was the NPR firing of Juan Williams right? 19% said it was right. 40-something percent said uh, wrong, no opinion was the balance. Uh, so less than 20% think that was a fair fire. I think it was right. absolutely wrong. It's shades of Shirley Sherrod, in my opinion. They didn't take the totality of his remarks, just like conservatives jumped on uh, some minor things she said in her remarks and twisted it out of proportion. He said, what he said was, we should be afraid of these fears within ourselves, of seeing people go on, from what I understand from what he said. And they took it and they fired him. They were looking for a reason to fire him, and they used this. They were wrong, so, knee-jerk, so, so we and a bad time for them to do it here in the political silly season. If they're not yeah. fair, and Balev, to use our term here at Fox, if they're not being fair, uh, maybe they shouldn't get well, uh, first, public funding. First of all, if you, they should compete in the marketplace because they are clearly not nonpartisan. And I agree with the congressman, even if they are. But to your point earlier about how many stations we need, signal range. You still only have so much signal, and it services it. There is a huge problem in this economic model if it takes that much money to run that small Broadcasting is expensive, which you is know, why it's going away. Go you, ahead, you, you shut me off before, but what I was trying to say is when you put $1.8 million from George Soros into NPR, you think that he doesn't have an ear into NPR? You're wrong. Also, the fact is, media matters. That's the same group that monitors me when I go on IMAS, monitors Beck, monitors O'Reilly, monitors every conservative person here. When you say one thing that's off code, all of a sudden they do a blogitation all over the internet and say, guess what Bo said the a other day? They, Bo, Bo, they blogitates us <laughs> sometimes <laughs> as we're on the air as well. But you're right. You're 100% right. I didn't say they didn't, that sort didn't have influence. Of course he did. He was giving them uh, $1.8 million for 100 what he calls reporters. But what are they going to dig up? What are they going to report on, Guy? Oh, obviously they follow the money and they do what their sugar daddy tells them to do. I think you can draw mm. your own conclusions there. Two quick points. One, Chris, you brought up Shirley Sherrod. I'll remind you that the White House, they were the ones that called Absolutely. for her to be fired. Absolutely. They blew it out of so, proportion. So, but I on, think you, that they overreacted. It, Chris, you blamed it on conservatives. I do. pointing out the Obama administration were, were the ones that told her to, to get Conservatives consorted it. We reacted out of proportion. We shouldn't have. Secondly, liberal intolerance. The left always says, oh, we're the tolerant people in society. No. Was it right-wing conservative Fox News viewers saying, get Juan Williams off the air, we disagree with him when he defends Barack Obama? No. We like Juan Williams. We disagree with him. I do, at least. I respect him immensely. It was the left-wingers at NPR that just couldn't tolerate what he had to say. Look, look, I, as, the, as the guy who's been in radio for 25 years on the panel, let me tell you something. I have seen all kinds of operations out there, but in the bastion of liberalism, and, or ba actually the bastion of fairness, which is what the NPR claims they are. Mm -hmm. They have been unfair in my entire career because they have always been biased. And this is fact, not conjecture. Media Matters, they've called me as someone who has Stockholm Syndrome. 
the, the head of NPR says that my, one my needs to consult his psychiatrist. Guys, let's, just, let's just focus on this. It's not uh, there are going to be left leaning blogs and there's going to be right leaning blogs. There's going to be all types. My problem is, Chris, they're getting taxpayer funding. You know what? We live in a republic. You don't always get a vote on what goes to get funded. You don't have to like everything that gets funded. There are things in the budget that I don't like. There are things in the right. budget that we all well, don't we like. We can't agree on it. It's a republic, not a Fair democracy. Enough. We've got to learn the difference when, when in this guys country. Get in, in January, they should yeah, vote this could, garbage you know out. They can right. do whatever. They could try to do whatever it's, they want. Gonna, it's not going to happen. Leave it there. <laughs> Stick around. We have a big show coming up. Fox Business: The Power to Prosper. Okay, on Wednesday, we told you about the latest desperate effort by the Dems to pull out the election wins. Take a look at this. We learned over the weekend but that last Wednesday, Cincinnati Public Schools, one of the teachers at Hughes High School brought three van loads of kids down to the Board of Elections with Democrat sample ballots in hand. Cincinnati attorney Chris Finney is suing CPS on behalf of political group Coast, saying students are being indoctrinated early on to vote Democrat and given no other choices. Thinking that there's only one way that you're allowed to vote, one way that you're allowed to think, and they indoctrinate the children apparently to believe that. He also believes the children were placed at risk. Placed on vans without any CPS personnel present. Two of the three vans had no CPS personnel present. The drivers had no background checks whatsoever, and uh, the vehicles themselves had not been approved or checked by Cincinnati Public Schools, all of which is required by state law. CPS told me they are trying to find out who made that call from Hughes High School, a move not approved by the district. Cincinnati Public Schools has a policy we learned of registering uh, students as soon as they turn 18, and they also have a policy every year of taking them down to the Board of Elections to make sure they vote. That was from our Cincinnati Fox affiliate, WXIX. Candidate for ha Hamilton County Auditor Tom Brinkman has filed a lawsuit against the Cincinnati Public Schools, and he's, um, he's out on the trail of this. Tom, I'm going to go right to you. Explain uh -huh. something to you. They're one in the we're very active in the ACORN movement, and uh, we're feeling they're one and the same. Go ahead, Bo. You want to jump well, in here? Wait a second. This is no big surprise. This is a high school. How about our elementary schools when Obama was running? When the U UFT we had the kids singing, we love Obama. And they were brainwashing these kids in elementary school. Well, how you know are they what? being brainwashed let's, by these liberals next let, to me over here? <laughs> catch them when they're little, huh? Let, me explain, you something, let me explain huh? something to you, Bo. Not a lot of 18-year-olds are voting Republican these days. They're probably not going to vote Republican the rest of their lives. Oh. Not a lot of people who need public schools are going to be voting Republican either because Republicans don't want public schools to be well funded and, and have the tools they need to get well, people out of, out of the drug right. right. Is that a fair, yeah. sta is that a fair yeah. statement? Yeah. Republicans, <laughs> wait, let's, let's talk about that for a second. Republicans don't want schools to be well funded. Right. They don't want, as the guy who's exposed most of the school fraud problems in a lot of the areas in New Jersey, you know, you ought to really go with the facts, Christopher, because let's let's be These facts. Don't let, me, let me finish and let's be civil for a moment. OK, <laughs> if you really want to work on facts, we'll work with it. Most parents in America want their children educated properly outside the party, but the indoctrination of any child, because the education system is supposed to give you both sides, mm -hmm. both points of view, all points of view, and then from that, let the well, child learn. One finish. of the facts that were mentioned, one of the facts that you were know, mentioned in this story was, let me, let me get in here for a second, because no. you talked about something, you made a point that I want to refute. One of the facts that he mentioned was that the school district had no knowledge of this, which me, makes me think that it was probably an extracurricular club. Could it have been the Democratic club? Let's ask him, Mr. Brinkman. Extracurricular outside of school. Guys, Mr. Brinkman, oh. did... School the district had no approval of this. Chris, please, let's ask Mr. Brinkman. Did the school district know about this? Well, the, uh, in the years past, the YMCA was actually the ones running these vans, but they hit, lost their funding this year. So this school principal, who was associated with the school, decided to pick up the uh, program and move it ahead. But she, because she had access into the school, she was able to get into Hughes High School, indoctrinate the kids, get them their ballots, Arrange for these formerly Acorn buses to take them down, and they only had one Form choice. Formerly Acorn buses cream. indoctrinate the kids. I have a 12 year old in seventh grade. I certainly don't want any political party to come in or any influence on one side or the other and tell my kid how they should be voting. Well, well if they're going to vote, they're 18. Chris, I'm asking, guys, go ahead. Well, 
First of all, Chris, you should take a look at a recent New York Times story about the youth vote trending right. So maybe you, maybe you missed that one. But on this particular point, we've, we've gone through, we've ticked off all the reasons why this is an outrageous story. But obviously people like Chris aren't too bothered by it. So I'm trying to conceive of a way to maybe evoke some liberal outrage over this. You know what the vans actually were? They were church vans. That sounds like a violation of the sacred separation of church and state that you guys are always so upset about. Are you, are well, you ticked off because of you that? Know, I'm not upset that the church lent the vans to somebody to do something. Oh, I mean, who cares? I don't know. I mean, you know, I'm sure the churches could rent the vans to whoever they want. So, I mean, so that's so up to the church. If it's benefiting uh, honestly, I, Democrats. Honestly, I believe in the separation of church and state, but I think you're making a stretch here. And as for the youth vote ticking right, wait, wait, not the inner wait, city wait, wait, youth Chris, vote, not in most Chris, parts of this country. Up, what did it go from 1% to 2%? Not the, Chris, not to gang up on you, but I got a movie for you to watch, Waiting for Superman, to show you little Democratic liberal teachers what they do to the youth with their education, how these kids are coming out of school, not being able to read. Re Oh, all right. What about me, that, Chris? Let me throw it over hey, to David. David, give us the example of the Newark school system that you talked about. Newark, Newark school system, and we talk about schools that graduate failed students, where in Newark, when Sharp James ran for mayor, he'd throw a block party, bring the vans over, and bring people down to votes, where there's huge amounts of voter fraud, not just in registration, but in hiring illiterate people to work the polls. I've seen this for myself, so I can say it, and report it on it, and then they go out and they electioneer yeah. near it, so they, they gerrymander the people, Eric, which is important, and literally lead them to where they need to vote. Nobody is That's saying wrong that in America. reform is not needed. No one is saying that there isn't fraud in America. But, you know, something about this story doesn't seem right to me. I don't see no. a school district a lot indoctrinating well, 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 kids and giving Democratic We're running out of time. Hold on, guys. We're running out of time. a club Chris, to me. What, what, what don't you understand about I, the story? It just doesn't seem right to me. I just, I would, it, it, it absolutely know, doesn't seem right. It does not seem like right. something they a school district would do on its own. And the reporter said that the school district had no knowledge this sounds like it was a club that might have used could, school could space. You ever, could you ever, These kids are 18 years me, old. Could you ever pull that thing that says Republican? If I, vote for, I, vote, let's not I, have voted, I have voted for We're a few say Republicans thank you to Mr. Thomas day. Brinkman. Thank you, sir, for joining us. When we come I'm back, you won't believe what they fake. Get this. There's even corruption in nature documentaries. The fraud next. Uh, during my service in the United States uh, Congress, uh, I took the initiative in creating the Internet, creating the Internet, creating the Internet, creating the Internet.